Good, good afternoon and good evening, Excellencies, honored guests, friends. I'm Franz Afrayim Katsir, Director of Sephardic Heritage International in DC or Shin DC. And we gather today with Sarajevo's Jewish leaders to celebrate their community, occurring as we mark the 84th anniversary of Kristallnacht. The Sarajevo community dedicates this program in honor of the memory of Ladino-speaking Holocaust survivor, Moshe Morris Ben David Al-Bahari, who passed away at the end of October, Keswama Repose, in Paz, in Gan Eden. Um, may his memory be for a blessing. Born in 1930, Morris Al-Bahari, who was one of Sarajevo's last Ladino speakers, joined the Yugoslav partisans at age 11, having escaped transport to the Nazi death camps. A number of Mr. Albahari's loved ones and colleagues are present today, including our colleague, Brian Kirshen. I would also like to acknowledge Lev Ratnovsky for his generous support and many thanks to our community co-sponsors, our Sephardic family, Bendichas Manos, Seattle Sephardic Network, Bendigamos Amsterdam, Temple Moses in Florida, Kesher Israel Congregation in Washington, D.C. And the Sephardi Hebrew community of Cape Town. Thanks to everyone who also helped us to get the word out. Today's program is the first in a new Shin D.C. series focusing on Jewish communities of the Balkans. We will now receive opening remarks from His Excellency Sven Alkaline, Bosnia and Herzegovina's permanent representative to the U.N., over to you, Ambassador Alkali. Thank you, Afraim. Uh, I welcome all participants of today's uh, Zoom forum on uh, Sephardic uh, community in Bosnia, Herzegovina, in Sarajevo. Uh, it's, a, it's a great pleasure to participate in this Sephardic Heritage International DC forum, which uh, looking at the participants, I, he, I see number of very familiar faces. Phil, Phil is here, uh, Vesna is here, and, and the others. I'm very glad to, to see them participate in today's. I'm also honored to uh, participate together with my dear colleagues, Jakob Finzi, the president of uh, Jewish community La Belna Valencia and uh, the other, and also uh, Hazan and uh, Igor. For today's participation, who will be able really to present the life and the, uh, uh, during the siege of Sarajevo, the life during, before and and after, in order to present uh, you how we used to live in Sarajevo, what Sarajevo represents in general, and uh, uh, what's the essence of Sarajevo. Bosnia-Herzegovina is a very complex country. It comprises of uh, three, uh, uh, one state, two entities, and uh, four religions, four major religions. And uh, that's uh, how Bosnia-Herzegovina was presented and lived all these years throughout the uh, Pre-war, pre-first, uh, for pre-second, pre-Holocaust, during Holocaust, and after during the siege of Sarajevo, uh, we in Bosnia Herzegovina sh share anecdote that uh, uh, that Bosnia Herzegovina is uh, like a mixture. Like if you are making a bread, then if you make a bread, you use the major ingredients: water, yeast flour and uh, this bread, if you bake it, it's not tasty, uh, something is missing. That uh, what is missing, the uh, salt, uh, that little salt 
is a tiny Jewish community in Sarajevo and Bosnia Herzegovina. The history of Sarajevo begins with the first uh, arrivals of the Jews uh, after exile from Spain via Turkey to the Ottoman, Ottoman Empire, and they settled there in Sarajevo, in Bosnia Herzegovina in general. The, the great Sultan, uh, the Magnificent, he said, who is this stupid leader who left all this uh, important and knowledgeable people out of their country who can make the prosperous of the country. And so the Jews exactly did that in Bosnia. That's why the, the life of uh, all uh, four religious communities thrived throughout all these times. And then we have the, the major houses of worship of all this uh, religions standing side by side, practically not far distance uh, between each other. And uh, what is important to mention that uh, during all this time, there were never destruction of any of those war crimes, war uh, uh, houses of worship by any of the other, other religions. Even, even uh, during the siege of Sarajevo, Muslims were repairing Orthodox Church, which was uh, destroyed by, to some extent, by the Serbian shelling forces. So all in all, uh, uh, it resembles like small Jerusalem that, that we were talking about Chikor Jerusalem in Ladino. So this is how we, we lived throughout this time. Uh, Sarajevo is known by its Haggadah, Sarajevo Haggadah. There's also very important issues of coexistence in Purim or the Sarajevo, then uh, other, other uh, events which I believe uh, my colleagues will enlighten. Uh, later on, I can uh, in, in, inter, inter, interact, have interaction by mentioning one uh, important episode regarding the Haggadah, but I'll let, let my colleague continue and start presenting uh, uh, the situation and the life of Sarajevo is uh, during all this historical time. So I'll uh, save the privilege to enter once again. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador Alkali, for your most fitting remarks. It's a great honor and pleasure to have you with us today and to celebrate the Jewish community of Sarajevo. We will now turn to the president of the community, Ambassador Jacob Finzi, and also Hazan Igor Benzion Kozemiakin, who serves at the historic Sarajevo synagogue. That's ambassador true. Finzi is the former ambassador of Bosnia and Herzegovina to Switzerland. He is a founding member and president of the Interreligious Council of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Ambassador Finzi also played a large role during the Bosnian War. La Benevolencia, um, which you've heard a bit about, um, which is the Jewish cultural, educational, and humanitarian society that he founded, spearheaded, he spearheaded, spearheaded early efforts to get medical supplies to the population, eventually becoming the only local organization delivering humanitarian relief on a non-sectarian basis. Hazem Kozhenyakin is a board member at La Benevolencia and was senior advisor at the Interreligious Council of Bosnia and Herzegovina. He's also a council member at the Council of National Minorities of Sarajevo. By the 1940s, Sarajevo's Jewish community, like most others in Europe, was nearly eviscerated by the Holocaust. Indeed, Ambassador Finzi himself was born in the Rab concentration camp the first person in his family not to be born in Sarajevo in 350 years. Ambassador Finzi, it is such an honor to celebrate Sarajevo's Jewish community with you. And with you, Ambassador Morning. Akalai and Hazam Kozhenyakin today. So Ambassador Finzi, can you please begin by sharing the history of the community with us? Good afternoon, buenas tardes. Oh, welcome all of you around. I saw on the list of participants uh, a few familiar names, 
and I would like to greet them specially. Naturally, history of the Jewish community of Sarajevo is really a long one because community was established in 1565. Uh, all you know that the expulsion from Spain happened in 1492. At that time, some Jews together with Columbus went to the States. Some of them came to the Balkans. Till today we are discussing who made the mistake and took the wrong direction. But we are where we are and you are all of you where you are. And I'm glad that we, we can communicate at least via Zoom, if not personally, each and every time. So in this long history of Sarajevo, just because we lived in the mixed society, in the beginning, the community was 100% Sephardic community. But very soon, the first Ashkenazis arrived, especially when Bosnia was given to Austro-Hungarian Empire on the end of the Berlin Congress in 1878, and the first Ashkenazi Jews arrived. For us, to be quite honest, it was a little bit strange for the old Sephardic community in Sarajevo to see these people, because obviously they are Jewish, but they cannot speak the language. Instead of speaking Ladino, like all the normal Sephardic Jews, they used to speak Yiddish, language that uh, we really cannot understand. And from that time, just because we are always joking with everything, we invent the joke that uh, these Ashkenazis, maybe they're Jews, maybe not, but we will accept them as the best friends of the Jews. And even today, if you're asking in Sarajevo, who are the best friends of the Jews, because we have three main national community, you always, from the Jews, will hear the answer, naturally Ashkenazis. Uh, Sarajevo was always town free of ghetto, free of any prosecution, and Jews live absolutely normally together with others. Till today, we don't have part of Sarajevo that can be called Jewish part or Jewish corner of Sarajevo. We used to have seven synagogues, five of them survive and even now are standing. Only one synagogue is working and Igor Kozemyakin is our Hazan leading regular service and we regularly don't have problem with the Minyan, not even on Friday evening. Uh, life in Sarajevo is life in former former socialist countries, which are not socialist anymore. The only problem with Bosnia is that we passed through the very difficult war. We lost 100,000 people in Bosnia. We lost uh, more than half a million inhabitants who left Bosnia during the war and now are living all over the world. And some of them are now on the line and they're listening to this and maybe they will find some additional uh, explanations why they, they, they left Sarajevo and why they're not uh, living with us anymore. We are now a small community in Bosnia and Herzegovina of around 1,000 Jews. 600 is living in Sarajevo and the rest is in the small towns like Mostar, Zenica, Tuzla, Banja Luka, Doboj, and all together we are Jewish community of Bosnia and Herzegovina. We have very good relations with the other religious communities, with the Muslim community, which is the biggest one, with the Orthodox Church and with the Catholic Church. Uh, these four traditional religious communities organize the Interreligious Council that I, I was proud to be first president until we are we have rotating presidency. Each year we are changing the president and next April again, I will be became president of the Interreligious Council, which is involved in the international uh, interreligious circles, organizations, including religion from peace or from New York and some other important international organizations. We are 
sometimes hosting some of the interreligious conferences. We are participating on the conferences, traveling around whenever we can afford this. And all around, I can say that we are living normally. And like each and every country all over the world, we have some problems. As uh, Ambassador Alcala said, one of the definition of Bosnia is that Bosnia is one state with two entities, three constituent people, four traditional religions, and hundreds of problems. Unfortunately, there is no magic wand that can solve all these problems, but on the daily basis, we are solving one by one, and maybe next time on a similar event like this one, you'll, you will hear the good news that at least half of the problems in Bosnia are solved. Because we have only 60 minutes and our history is uh, more than 450 years old, I will not take any more of time now. And naturally, I will be ready to answer each and every question or additional explanation to give uh, additional explanation if this is, will be necessary. So thank you for uh, listening to me. Thank you for organizing this interesting gathering. And uh, I wish you a, good, a lot of luck during this week. Thank you so much, Ambassador Fincy. Thank you for sharing some of your community's rich history with us. So to continue, Safar de Heritage International's mission includes building intercultural bridges. Uh, Azam Kojaniakin, can you tell us more about interreligious relations in Sarajevo? For example, um, you've heard about the Purim di Sarai, earlier from Ambassador Alkali. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, gladly. First of all, I would like to greet all of you from Sarajevo and to say that it's really my pleasure and honor to be with you this afternoon or evening in our case. And you probably all of the participants or most of you heard about Sarajevo Haggadah is the most important Jewish artifact for which Bosnia and Herzegovina is known for throughout the world. But a little less known fact is that Sarajevo as many other Jewish communities throughout the world has its own uh, Purim. Has its, its own Purim. Purim is a Jewish. Purim is a Jewish holiday celebrated each 14th of Adar, or in the leap years it would be Adar, Bet or Ve Adar, as we in the Sephardic tradition say. And we are remembering saving of the Persian Jews mostly by uh, a proactive work of a Jewish woman called Esther or Hadas, which is her Jewish name. So on that day, Jews listen, are obliged basically to listen to the reading of Megillat Esther. This is the recounting of this historical story of how this woman saved Jews from, from extermination. Well, well, it's a bit less known that Sarajevo Jews has all, all, also their own Purim, as many other communities I already mentioned. So, which is very interesting that in the Balkan region, only in the former Yugoslavia, we had three local Purims, two celebrated, one in Belgrade, one in Dubrovnik, Ragusa, and one in Sarai. So our uh, Purim is actually commemorating, it is called Hag Asirim. Why it's called Hag Asirim? Because it bears the memory of the liberation of a group of the most prominent Jews of Sarajevo during that time, with Ham uh, Moshe Danon, Alava Shalom, as the Avbet Din, who was the chief rabbi of Bosnia and other 12 members of the community were basically uh, imprisoned by local leader called Ruzdi Pasha. And during that time, at the beginning of the 19th century, in Bosnia, there was pretty much uh, exchange of rulers. 
So in the period of two years, we had the three different Pashas, rulers who ruled Bosnia, and all of them the, ruled in the sake of gaining material value for themselves. So they were very, they, they, they stayed in Travnik, which was to be a capital of, of Bosnia, for a few months, and then they left the country and the Padisha, or the Sultan from Istanbul, wrote a new Pasha who ruled the country. So uh, the Rushdi Pasha, when he came, he demanded a huge ransom. And he threatened to kill Rav Moshe Danon and all the 12 prominent members of the community unless the Jewish community will pay 500 sacks of golden coins. It's around 50,000 golden coins which was not possible even if the whole community will gather all of its possessions of its members, it would not be sufficient. So the Jewish community was not obviously able to pay this sum of money. And soon everyone entered uh, fast and tried to pay for the release of the Jews that were planned to be exterminated uh, on the night, on, 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 the, on the Shabbat morning. Uh, but despite these prayers on the Friday evening, nothing still happened. So the story goes uh, that devoted a Jew called Raphael Alevi broke the rules of Shabbat by going to each around the city, there were eight coffee houses. And coffee houses, the custom was such that the only Muslim population could enter the coffee house, order a coffee, and the coffee did not have that specific price. But anyone would leave some kind of a small coin uh, on behalf of his own. So he went throughout according to the story, all eight coffee houses, and in each coffee house, he paid a golden coin. And eventually people start asking questions. Who is this Jew and how come he's coming to the coffee house, which is allowed only for Muslims? And we know that it's Shabbat and he is, uh, he's a kind of, uh, of uh, a pious Jew who is keeping laws of Allah. So they were all amazed how he was coming and they learned about the issue of imprisonment of 13 most prominent Jews of Sarajevo. And uh, they explained about the threatened execution of these religious uh, Jews for lack of payment of this exorbitant ransom that was not able to be covered by the community, not even of the old citizens of Sarajevo. And then the citizens of Sarajevo arose to fury. A group of basically around 3,000 men surrounded his Pasha's headquarters called Konak, where he was basically sleeping while coming to Sarajevo. Because as a Pasha, he was allowed to come and spend three days and three nights in Sarajevo on expense of the citizens of Sarajevo. But this specific Pasha stayed there for a little longer time. So the old Sarajevans aroused uh, to stop this practice. And also they freed these men by surrounding this headquarters of Pasha. And they free, freed all these 13th uh, uh, prominent members of the community and they proceed by signing a petition called Mahzar that 200 religious Muslims, mostly members of Ulama, of the, 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 the clergy, but also some merchants and some other people from the city, around 200 of them, signed this petition that was sent to Sultan in Istanbul. Also, the Jewish community sent by its own emissaries and the community in Istanbul also signed a petition and said that this is the wrong doings of the cruel Pasha and that whatever he say might be not correct and the truth is as it is said. 
in this letter and it is said everything that they were imprisoned just because of the ransom. So these freed hostages, followed by all Jews and Rav Moshe Ganon, Malava Shalom, the front, they proceeded to the synagogue to thank God for this release. And while they were in prison, and we know now from historical facts that it community, the Muslim community and the locals probably knew about the, the, the imprisonment of Moshe Danon and other prominent members. They knew because they spent more than 70 days in prison. So after they release the Khamri B. Moshe Danon, he vowed that he will travel to Jerusalem as all of the Chachamim of Sarajevo were doing basically after finishing their uh, position, uh, the position of the chief rabbi, they would most of them travel to Jerusalem to study Kabbalah in Yeshivat Betel in the old city of Jerusalem. So he vowed that he will go, but it took him 11 years after his release to commence this uh, travel. But unfortunately, he passed away on his way to the port of Metkovich, which, which was a connecting port. Uh, it happened on 20th of, of Hodesh Sivan. In, uh, uh, and uh, he was bur buried basically in the place called Kreishina. It's the city of nowadays Stolets in Herzegovina region. And this Basically, his uh, site, this site of his burial, became eventually a pilgrimage site for Bosnian Jews. So, on this tomb of his, it is inscribed that this stone is a monument to a holy person whose work is miraculous and who should be celebrated as religious and sacred. And uh, he was our teacher and the great. Rabbi, that is what is written on his graveyard. Now, eventually, these happenings might have been forgotten as the time passed, but there were a series of miracles in the life of a very pious Jewish man called uh, Moshe uh, Raphael Atias, which was known as Zeki Effendi in the circles of Sarajevo. Not only Jewish, but also all other circles because he used to be a uh, civil servant of the Ottoman Empire. It was after Tanzimat, after the changes, mm -hmm. that also non-Muslims could serve as uh, servants of the, the, the empire. And he was very ill as a young person. So he decided to go to Vienna to undergo very, very complicated surgery. But then this outcome of this surgery was very uncertain. And since he was a religious man, he prayed for Refua Shalema, and so did his whole family and the whole community and friends of his in Sarajevo. Suddenly on that day that he was supposed to be operated, his surgeon died. And Zeki understand, Zeki Effendi Rafaelovich or Moshe Rafael Atias understand that this is a divine will and that he has to accept his illness the way it is and to find a way to live with it. Upon his returning to Sarajevo, he developed a high fever. And all of, the, all of a sudden he felt that the room was filled with light, the music, and sound of wings. And he saw, saw uh, the late Moshe Danon Alava Shalom, and the Chacham told him, Our Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, has ordered your suffering to end. And I was chosen to be his messenger. And very, very soon after that, Zeki Effendi recovered fully. So on the 20th of Sivan, the date that uh, Rav Danon passed away, he went to uh, the, his tomb in Stolac, 
to pray and to give thanks to praise Lord for his recovery. And after that, uh, the life of this Paham Moshe Danon became the most important thing in his life. He collected materials, including Rav Danon's memories, which were written in this daftar that he was writing, the notebook. And he wrote there about the liberation. He wrote there about this petition of Maschai that was signed against Rushdie Pasha. And he also interviewed older people who knew Rav Danon, as well as other contemporary people of his times that studied and he also continued to study books and archives and what other people wrote. And from this research, he reconstructed the events, basically, of this life of uh, Rav Moshe Danon and wrote Megillah de Sarai, which is basically the Megillah that resembles all these events from the beginning of the 19th century. It was... Uh, uh, the name and the, on the day of the fourth day of the month of Heshvan or Mar Heshvan, as it was written in uh, Zeki Fendi's Megillah. So this, what we have now, it's the only translation of original Megillah de Sarai, which was inscribed in Judeo Espanol in uh, Hebrew Rashi letters. But our famous Jewish writer from the 19th century, Dr. Isaac Samokovlia, whose family was basically Baruch, but his Baruch family came from Samokov in Bulgaria. So that's why they, when they came to Bosnia, they were called Samokovlia and they changed their name. But he was a medical doctor and a writer, and he translated this work from Landino in 1926. And we eventually have lost the original in the Holocaust. We lost the original Sarajevo Haggadah. So now we in the community are in process of reconstructing or re, uh, 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 retranslating this into the Judeo Espanol by the help of Professor Eliezer Papo from Ben Gurion University in Negev, who is also a non residential rabbi. And of our community who comes eventually he, he, here and there to help the community. So uh, this town of Rav Moshe Danon in Stolac that you could see also on some uh, slides in this presentation became a place of pilgrimage for uh, Sarajevo Jewelry. So uh, later on the other community, so we started also to remember these events more often after the last war in Bosnia, because it was almost forgotten during the time of socialism and it was not celebrated. Recently, we started celebrating Purim Nisarai on each fourth of Heshwar. So we are reading the Megillah that we have in a local language and have a special uh, Kaddish for that event. Uh, we also uh, remembered the 200 years of these events together with the Islamic community by organizing a huge academic conference devoted to uh, coexistent and mutual life between Jews and Muslims. And that would be it for now if, if it is okay with you. Thank you so much, Azam Kozhamyak, and there's a video that you've asked us to share. We have this tradition of mutual coexistence for almost five centuries. Our cultures also interfere with each other, being it the music, being it uh, 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 customs related to certain holidays. So in this particular video, you could see how the the, the Jewish liturgical hymn became, uh, the melody of this hymn basically became a, 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 a melody for a very known Bosnian folk song called Kadja Pojah na Bendash. 
So basically, this is a video recorded by a guy from Turkey who is researching about the music. <laughs> Now I will perform one song that is the it's traditional Bosnian song, Sabda song, called uh, Kadja Pojoh na Benbashu. Uh, the melody is actually derived from the Sephardic uh, music because th there is a, a Sephardic prayer, a Jewish prayer. I don't know on, with, on some of the Jewish holidays, and the same melody was is sang during the, that holiday. Also, there is on the same melody there is a beautiful uh, Ladino Sephardic song, Mi Querido Mi Amado. And also in our tradition we have the same song as I told you at, at the beginning. It's called Kadia Pojo na Bembashu. Oh uh -huh. 
Kila Venismeha Boze Hayo Asadona Nagila Venismeha Anadona Now for some more questions. We've covered some a lot of Sarajevo's rich Jewish history. And I'd like to pose this question to, to Ambassador Finzi. Could you please tell us about the Jews and the Jewish communities in the Balkans more generally? And how your community is connected to the others, both historically and today? Naturally, we have very close connections with our friends, Jewish communities all over the Balkans. We have in very almost daily basis connection with the Jewish community in Belgrade, Jewish community in Zagreb. We are very close to the Jewish community in Skopje, in Northern Macedonia. We just came back from Montenegro, where Jewish community offer us hospitality for the gathering of the Jews from the Balkans, on which we discuss different issues common to all our communities. Speaking especially about the Jewish community in Sarajevo, in Bosnia, maybe the biggest problem for us is that the restitution of property, which was nationalized during the socialism, was not yet returned. To the Jewish community in other regions, in other republics of former Yugoslavia, who are now independent states, this problem is solved for better or for worse, but in Sarajevo, in Bosnia, we didn't get even one building back. And uh, it's uh, almost ridiculous that now for the, for the, build, for the offices of uh, our archive, we got from the municipality, they rented us one of Jewish apartments, which was nationalized, and instead of giving us back this, they are just taking the rent from us. But naturally, this is a problem with which we lived almost 70 years. And I'm sure that this will be solved in the next period of time on our way to become part of a European Union. Naturally, question of the ownership of the property of uh, the Jews as well as the victims of the Holocaust will be solved and will be resolved. We have some very good examples in our neighborhood in Serbia. They solved this problem excellently and the Jewish community is living comfortable from the money that they get from the state or they are getting on regular base, on the yearly base from the state. Uh, the other problems, quite honestly, doesn't exist. We have one problem, which is problem of our uh, peace agreement, which was signed in Dayton, Ohio. And part of this peace agreement was also the constitution of Bosnia-Herzegovina. According to this constitution, for the seats in the House of People, that's been upper house of our parliament, as well as for the presidency, seats in the presidency, all this uh, are reserved only for the people who belong to the constituent people, that's been to the three main ethnic groups. Uh, unfortunately, I'm a lawyer by profession, and, and as a lawyer, in 2005, I started the case against Bosnia-Herzegovina in front of the European Court 
Court for Human Rights in Strasbourg, and I won this case. And now uh, I have a court decision that I am allowed to compete for all this, but this decision of the court was not yet implemented in Bosnia-Herzegovina. I hope that this will happen one day. Naturally, I am more than 20 years older than I was when I started the case, but still, in case that they allowed me, I will be younger than its president built, <coughs> President Biden these days. But this is not really a problem for the Jews in Bosnia and Herzegovina. This was just one of technical problems that should be solved. And I hope that the new, newly elected parliament will solve this problem in the next few years. My next question. Um is for both of you, Ambassador Finci and Hazan Kozimiak, and you've already said a bit about this, but can you please tell us about what is going on in your community today? And how does the complex socio-political situation in the Balkans affect the Jewish life? And conversely, how are Jews contributing to the development of the Balkans? So I'll tell you, like, because it, it seems we have a very rich history, but we have very also painful history of Holocaust, but fortunately it did not end it. We were devastated as a community, 85% of our community perished, but eventually we continued to, to exist. And there are still existing the Jewish community, and it's very important to mention that we have a lot of programs within the community that we offer for our members, starting from Sunday school as a kind of a gathering for the smallest children in our community. Uh, there is a Sunday school program that it's uh, our way to uh, provide Jewish education to our children because they do not, we have a confessional religious education in public schools, but the Jewish community is not able to organize such uh, instruction in, in, in public schools. So we are doing this in a community and it's mostly concentrated on religion and tradition and culture of the Jews in, in general and in Bosnia. We have also youth programs for our youngsters. We have a student club. Actually, it is not a club. It is a union of Jewish students of Bosnia and Herzegovina as a part of the European Union and the World Union of Jewish Students. Then we have a women's club called Bohoreta. It's our shame on the name of our famous uh, female writer from the beginning of the 20th century, Laura Papo Ocreta, who was also one of the rare feminists during that time in our country. We have social programs, both for people in need, for Holocaust survivors, and also for the elderly people. Uh, and what I have also to say that it's very important that all of our programs that we are doing are based on a non-sectarian basis. So we do not help only Jews, but we help also our neighbors, regardless of their religious or ethnic belonging. This is uh, also in our program of home care for elderly people. Only, I think, 10 to 15% of beneficiaries are Jewish, or other are non-Jews. We have also Yad Sara, which is an, uh, within the community, a uh, social program for disabled persons to help them with all the vessels that they need for, for a normal life, to make their life easier. Beside these programs, we do have a lot of... Uh, uh, encounters with other faiths, as Mr. Finzi already mentioned, through the Interreligious Council, which has its chapter throughout the country, even in those small municipalities where we have a Jewish community, such as Doboe, Banja Luka, and Zenica, and Tuzla, we do have these communities participate in these events, interfaith events. Beside this the community, uh, do a lot of cultural program through its uh, society, La Bena Valencia, which it's 
uh, luckily sees to be a main, it's, its main focus is not anymore the humanitarian work. Its main focus is cultural and educational programs, which it should be. We also do a program within the public schools, program on fighting anti-Semitism and Islamophobia and all other xenophobias. We did connect these issues because of the, 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 such as uh, circumstances that our country is in. So we did, it is a huge success that we managed to enter the public schools of five public schools within the city of Sarajevo. And this is a program that showed us that there is a lot of need to work on these issues because there is no anti-Semitic incidents. We do not feel any kind of anti-Semitic threats unless it is in uh, a social media. So it's very easy to be under a false name and then to have some anti-Semitic statements but it's only in the, the, the space in the, of social media and we did not experience any kind of hatred uh, during the last time. Ambassador Fincy, is there anything you'd like to add to that? I would like to add that uh, uh, a strange miracle happened here in Sarajevo because uh, during the war and because of the war, we tried to evacuate all our children and all the elders from Sarajevo. Children went mainly to Israel, where they finished secondary school. A lot of them finished the army, and then they came back to Sarajevo. Not all of them, but huge number of them came back to Sarajevo for the university studies. And uh, then, then in this period between 2000 and 2000 and 15, only four newborn babies we got in the Sarajevo Jewish community. And then suddenly, after 2015, a lot of these young people who finished the university, who get a job, made the family, start to produce the children. And we organized a new program called Mazal Tov. Whoever got a baby, got some financial help from the community and the uh, American Jewish Joint Distribution Committee to help to raise the baby and to equip everything. So we got, believe me or not, 57 new members. For two of them, even Igor is responsible because he is a father of two. And these children are now uh, ready for the Sunday school. Some of them are already in Sunday school. And we are discussing possibility of open the Jewish kindergarten uh, in the community. And uh, let's hope that we'll succeed to finalize this till the end of the uh, coming year. Thank you. We wish you much success in that. And my next question is, what can American and Israeli Jews, for example, or Jews outside of Bosnia and Herzegovina do to support the Jewish life in Bosnia, and also in the Balkans, more generally? I think that it's very important to know a little bit more about uh, Jews in Bosnia. And uh, I'm glad to see on the list of the participants of this gathering, Francine Friedman, who, was, who spent several years in Bosnia and who produced excellent book about uh, Jews and Jewish life in Bosnia. And uh, I hope that this, will, this book will make Jewish Bosnian community even more popular than it was till now. And whenever some Jewish community is in trouble, we are one of the first ready to help in, the small, uh, in our small capability, but still to help because we learned the lesson, what does it mean when you are Jewish, we are never alone. There are always someone who will be ready to help. And this other is always your Jewish brother or sister. Thank you. And it's a real honor and a pleasure for us to connect with you and your community today. A number of folks and organizations, including Shin DC, working to revive the Ladino language, which is endangered. Could you please tell our audience about the role that Ladino or Judeo-Spanish plays in your community today? 
and how Mr. Morris Al-Bahari, Alaba Shalom, was connected to that. Also here in Washington, D.C., Maryland, Virginia area, we are most fortunate to have our beloved Nona Flory Jagoda, Alea Shalom, who was from the family was from Sarajevo, as part of our community here. What role does her work play, also play in your community today? Unfortunately, this year, this time, uh, Ladino is almost almost language which is not spoken in the Jewish community. Just few of us can speak a little bit Ladino. And my Ladino is a Ladino from the kitchen of my Nona, because I used to speak with my Nona only Ladino, because she didn't speak any, any language. And I know everything that uh, is important with my lunch, with my dinner, with my food, and the other things. And I know how to complain on Ladino, naturally. Uh, these days, traveling to Spain or Portugal, I can manage with Ladino pretty well, uh, regardless if it's Castilian or Catalan, but everyone can uh, understand. And uh, they are astonished to hear this language. Unfortunately, Morit Bahari passed away, but still we have a uh, few speakers of Ladino, and we hope that Ladino will stay alive. We try to organize some courses of language, but then suddenly everyone switched to Spanish, especially when the Spanish government offer, offer citizenship to the Sephardic Jews who have all the documents, not the birth certificate of some of the family members issued in Spain before 1492, because this is not the case for now. But some people have uh, already got Spanish citizenship and for getting citizenship, they should pass the exam of Spanish, but not Ladino. But Spanish and Ladino is the same language. Modern Spanish is used even today in the so many million of inhabitants of this globe. I would like also to add, because Ladino, I'm not a speaker of Ladino, for example, but I do use it in a liturgy, litur liturgical sense, because some parts of the prayers are recited in Ladino. For example, for Arvit, for Shabbat, one of the psalms are recited in Ladino, or some other uh, for Motsay uh, Shabbat, also for Abdallah, some of the things are recited in Ladino. So there is a huge importance of learning, basically, Ladino, and we thought of starting a uh, uh, once again, a project of learning Ladino, but it, it did not have enough uh, people who were uh, interested in learning. They all switched, as Mr. Ambassador Finci said, they all switched to modern Spanish. We'll now turn to questions from our audience. Lisa Finkelstein has commented that the Jewish History Museum in Sarajevo is lovely, but she would like to know why all of the signage at the museum is not in English. The signage in, in the Jewish history museum, in, 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 of, museum of Jews of Bosnia is, is uh, pretty poor in English. So it is a lovely museum. However, it has to be, uh, it's, uh, uh, it has to be renewed. I mean, the, we as a community have to be more involved. And we are starting this process to work with the Museum of Sarajevo to introduce more significant uh, artifacts and also to explain all things in English because most of the people that are coming to the museum are basically tourists. We also have a question from Yvette Shalom, who's in France. Yvette comments that this is a fabulous program and she asks, are the Balkan communities interacting with the communities in Thessaloniki and Istanbul, Izmir, etc. We do interact also with other communities in Thessaloniki, uh, not that much, but with Istanbul, we have a strong connection with Rabbi uh, Naftali Haleva, who is uh, a rabbi of the community in Ortake. It's Ets Haim Synagogue. We have more connection with other communities in former Yugoslavia because the language is the one that connects us. But it would be naturally to have a close connections also with people from Thessaloniki or from Istanbul. But they also are experiencing the same problem with lack of knowledge in Ladino. 
Ben Kessen asks if any support was provided by La Benevolencia to the people of Sarajevo during the pandemic. Yes, during the pandemic, we, uh, through La Benevolencia, organized a group of 20 young volunteers because we had a full lockdown, all elderly people, not elderly, about 65 and below 18. They were not allowed to go out of house. So we did organize immediately a working group and a group of volunteers who provided meals, who provided med medical help, transfer to medical institutions, whatever needed for our members and friends of the community. We also, for our community members, we organized the vaccination tours to Belgrade because our country did not import it. Uh, especially in the beginning of pandemics, they did not import any vaccines. So we, for our members, we organized, and it was a co true connections of the Jewish community in Serbia, we organized transfer for these people, like bus, short bus to Belgrade, they received a vaccine and came back to Sarajevo. So these are just the, 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 the sorts of support that we did support with our community members and also our citizens. We were also involved in bringing vaccines. So through uh, Philip Weiner, who used to be, he's from the United States, from Massachusetts, but he used to live in Sarajevo, being a judge in, in Bosnian court as a, as a foreign appointed judge for uh, war crimes. So he was member of the community. So when he heard, he immediately wanted to help. So he organized the group in the United States to help us with the vaccines and they did a donation to the country. So Jews did help a lot during the COVID, not just to the community members, but also to all other uh, citizens of Sahara. So we should wrap this up soon. I'd like to share a couple of the comments in the chat. Thank Brian Kirshen for joining us today. Brian says, thank you for this wonderful program, Vidas Largas. Uh, and thank you, thank you for that, Brian. And Marcel Israel is with us. And she says, once again, thank you very much. We are very happy to know about our sisters and brothers in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Merci mucho. Que tenga salud y mazal. And so one other person had asked, how can we support the Jewish community in Sarajevo, and also La Benevolencia. So maybe we can end with that. And is there something that you each would like to share before we close today's meeting? I would like to express my gratitude first for all of you participants and see many people are participating. Naturally, even this uh, hour is a great help for us. This is support for the Jewish community in Sarajevo for the Jews in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And I'm so pleased to see so many people who have been participants of this meeting because they show interest for us. And this is sometimes more than material help that can be also very useful. Naturally, we are not in the war situation and we know that there are some other Jewish communities who are in trouble and it's better to organize something to help our brothers in Ukraine. Naturally, not a lot, a lot of them are Sephardic Jews, but they are Jews. And we are all one people, regardless uh, how we are divided inside us by national uh, participation in this or that, that kind of temple prayer or way of praying. So this is, this is one of the supports. Naturally, we'll stay in touch and uh, we'll send you our report from which you will see what we are doing, how we are helping all the Jews in Bosnia and Herzegovina, how we are helping other citizens in Bosnia, how we are cooperating with the Jews in the region and in Europe. And later on, we can discuss easily how you can interfere in this and help us in our future work. So thank you for organizing this. Thank you for all the participants who have been 
almost till, till now with us. And let's hope to hear each other again during next year, let's say. Thank you. So on this, it's a really fruitful discussions. I hope you, through the presentation of my dear friends, you were able to see the work and the life of a Jewish community in Sarajevo, not all aspects of this, and uh, uh, such a great turnout for this event. And uh, we hope that this is not the last event in the series, the, our communication. And I think it would contribute to that we know each other better and work together in future. Thank you. Thank you. Merci mucho. Ambassador Akalai, Ambassador Finzi, and Hazan Kozemyakin. Thanks to all our co-sponsors and thanks to all of you. Again, the Sarajevo community dedicates this program in honor of the memory of Ladino-speaking Holocaust survivor Moshe Morris Ben David Al-Bahari, whose son is present in today's meeting. Thank you so much for joining us. Kiswama Repose in Ganeden. And Amen, overall, overall, over 100,000 Ladino speaking Jews from the Balkans perished during the Holocaust. However, as we mark the 84th anniversary of Kristallach, we gather here today to celebrate Sarajevo's Jewish community, its continuity, and its rich heritage. And I'd like to express to you that your community is precious to us, even though we're not in, in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And as Ambassador Finzi said, we are all one people, and we take that to heart, and we hope to continue these celebrations with you, these conversations. And so thank you again. Merci mucho. Today's program is the first in a new Shin DC series focusing on Jewish communities of the Balkans, and we look forward to reconnecting with you to hear about the progress of the Jewish community in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Thank you to our distinguished speakers, and thanks to all of you for joining us tonight.